This video is sponsored by Squarespace. How's it going guys? Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Welcome to another video tutorial. Today in this quick tip, we're gonna take a look at how to create this pseudo plexus effect within Cinema 4D. If you guys aren't aware of what the plexus effect is, it's basically a plugin for After Effects that allows you to create these interesting connected vertex points uh, within After Effects very easily using a plugin. Unfortunately, there isn't a very, very simple plugin to do this within Cinema 4D that I know of, but luckily it's not too bad. And this is what we're gonna talk about today in this tutorial here. So I've been seeing this effect being used quite a bit in Cinema 4D recently, especially on social media, and especially from a guy named Joey Camacho. He creates a lot of interesting, nice 365 renders, and he uses this kind of uh, 3D plexus effect pretty often here, like this uh, image right here. This one's pretty cool. Um, he's a few others for an example. Let's go back and, uh, you know, he has this kind of glassy one right here. And another cool one, um, this image right here. So, you know, it's a very popular effect and it's quite easy to create. So I'm going to show you one way to do it. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, delete all this. I'm going to delete this and these two cloners. So let's go ahead and start off with an object here. This can be any object, any model, whatever you want to use. I'm going to use this object right here, the platonic object. I'll change the segments to two so we have more segments because it uses the vertex points between uh, polygons here, lines here to render these uh, little spheres here. So I'm going to change the segments to two and I'm going to leave it the radius at 100. Just to take a look at my scene here, I just have a very basic setup. So for the environment and background, I have a simple HDR studio rig from Grayscale Gorilla. I have two lights here, a warm light and a cool light. One has a shadow and we're using an area light here. So that's pretty much a very basic setup. Uh, we have this object here. Now Cinema 40 has something called the Atom Array. And this does something very, very close. Um, we can just drag the photonic into the Atom Array. And instantly we have a nice, you know, kind of plexus effect here. So let me just scroll out of the camera here. And as you can see, we have a very nice little plexus style rig here. We can change the cylinder. Uh, radius, you can you know decrease the size, increase the sphere radius, increase the subdivisions to maybe like 12, and just like that you have a nice plexus effect. Now the downside is that it's not very very flexible and it's not very easy to manipulate. Um, ideally, I love using uh, MoGraph. MoGraph is my preferred module of choice. Whenever I can use it, uh, I will probably you know incline to be using MoGraph a lot. That's very very simple. It's very easy to manipulate. And uh, luckily for me, Tim Clapham from Hello Lux has a great little article about how to recreate the atom array using the cloner object. So you can use MoGraph and all that stuff. Um, so, you know, props to Tim for writing this. I actually learned this technique a few, uh, you know, a while ago, and uh, I'm using this technique quite a lot, and I thought I would share it. But I just want to give Tim credit for this because I did not figure this method out. And uh, Tim is also, you know, the awesome Cinema 4D guy. He does a lot of Cinema 4D training tutorials. So if you want to check out uh, his site, hellolux.com, the link will be in the article or description down below. So check them out. Props to Tim for teaching me this method. I'm just going to show you guys in video form, but you know, props to him. So I'm going to go ahead and delete, uh, you know, this atom array here. Let's go ahead and recreate the platonic here. So I'll create one right here. And, uh, you know, we'll just pull it up a little bit. Increase the segments to two and uh, that should be good. So the first step is to create the vertex spheres here. We can do that with a cloner. So we can go to MoGraph, cloner. This cloner will be the sphere cloner and we'll create the object, so the sphere here. We'll scale the sphere down to about 15, maybe even smaller, maybe like five. And we'll decrease the segments to around 18 because we don't need that many uh, segments here. And we'll put the sphere as a child of the sphere cloner. So right now the sphere cloner is actually just cloning our sphere three times in a linear mode. I'm going to change it to object. Now it's going to ask us what object do you want to clone around. We're going to select our platonic object. Make sure it's turned on here. So right now it's taking the sphere, the sphere cloner is taking the sphere and cloning it around the object, which is our platonic object here. And as you can see, we have our spheres cloned around the vertex points because we're using the vertex distribution here. So this is pretty cool. Now we're on the right track. So now we're gonna create another cloner, MoGraph cloner. We'll call this lines cloner. And this is where we're gonna create the vertex connector lines. So we're gonna create a cylinder. 
change the radius to around five. And uh, we'll put this cylinder, we'll call this lines. We'll put it under the lines cloner, go to lines cloner, set the object mode and select our platonic object. So same thing as before, we're creating a lines, we're cloning the lines onto our object, similar to what we did to the sphere. Now, the only difference is instead of using distribution to vertex, we don't want to put the lines at the vertex per se. We want to put it to the edge. So it's going to align everything to the edge here. We'll hit scale to on edge, which is going to scale everything so that it will fit from edge to edge. And we'll set the edge scale to 100%. So we'll actually connect edge to edge. So by checking on scale on edge, we're going to rescale our line cylinder to the edges and we'll set the edge scale to 100% so they all connect evenly here. And I'll just go to the lines and just decrease the radius even more here. So maybe around one. That's looking pretty good. And what we have now is our full plexus object. And it looks very similar to the atom array object. Only now it's purely in MoGraph and we can do things like use effectors within MoGraph. Um, you pretty much have the simplicity control of MoGraph. So for an example, we can even, uh, you know, we'll even use a displacer here. We'll use a displacer and we will put that under the platonic and we'll go to shading and use a noise shader. And, you know, we can just manipulate this thing. We can go to the object. We can increase the strength and that will just, you know, destruct our platonic object, which is linked to the cloner. So the cloners will react appropriately. Everything is dynamic. Everything's awesome. And of course, we can add some materials to here. We'll maybe add a material, a white material to the sphere cloner. And then a darker material to the lines, as well as the platonic object here. So what we have now is something like this. And just like that, we created a very nice vertex line connected plexus pseudo effect within Cinema 4D. Um, before I move on, I want to go ahead and thank our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is a place to be if you want to create an awesome website, whether it's for your online business, store, or portfolio. Squarespace is the place to be. They have amazing, beautifully designed templates, professionally crafted, completely customizable. They have a live drag and drop builder so you can edit your pages very easily without any technical knowledge. It's very easy to use. They have awesome support. I like Squarespace so much that I actually use it for my own personal website portfolio. Best of all, Squarespace is very affordable. Starting at just $8 a month, you can get a website up and running right now as well as a free domain name for up to a year. You can start your free trial by going to squarespace.com slash dojo. And when you're ready to check out, make sure you use the promo code dojo to save 10% off your order and support the dojo. So check it out, squarespace.com slash dojo, Squarespace. So that's pretty much it, guys. This is pretty much how you create a pseudo plexus effect within Cinema 4D. Um, you can get more intricate with this. You can use more effectors. Um, for example, you can use the random effectors. You can use the shading effector, the sound effector trait, uh, audio reaction, stuff like that. There's a lot of other cool things that you can do without really having to use a lot of technical knowledge like Espresso to link up things with the matrix object and stuff like that. So by using MoCraft, you can create this very easily with a lot of controls uh, without all the complications of Espresso and stuff like that. So it's a pretty cool method. Thank you, Tim, once again for showing this method to everyone. Check them out at hellolux.com. That's pretty much it for this quick tip, guys. My name is Vincent Wynn from the Creative Dojo, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.